good road win. Another good road win for our guys, uh, as has been the MO all year, uh, right down to the wire and uh, beyond, you know, two overtimes. And so, um, just uh, reiterating what I said after the game, proud of the way our guys continue to find ways to win and to uh, slug it out to the bitter end and uh, just keep playing. That's the bottom line. They just keep playing. Uh, some good performances. Nate Orchard, uh, great individual performance. Uh, leads the nation in sacks. Just tremendous defensive ends. One of the best, if not the best, defensive ends in the country. Um, excellent uh, field position uh, battle uh, won by our punt, our punt game, and Tom Hackett in particular uh, doing an outstanding job for us. I think he leads the nation in punts inside the 10 yard line and, and just having an outstanding year. So, so a lot of good things uh, on uh, Saturday. Uh, most, the best of them all, obviously, is getting the win and uh, getting now uh, our sights set on uh, Arizona. They come to our place, last home game uh, for our seniors. Uh, a lot of great seniors in this class and uh, giving us a lot of uh, effort and uh, really everything they've got over the last several years. And, and so uh, we're going to honor them before the game. And you know we're really going to miss those guys. But anyways, uh, questions? Um, you know, in, in the uh, overtime periods, it really seemed like the offense really opened up and, and, and found some options. What was, what was different about the overtimes versus um, you know the the regulation. What opened up in there? Well, I think the obviously the uh, our offense had, had a, a lot of, a lot of time to to uh, take a look at what Stanford was doing defensively. And when we got to the overtime, there were a few things we hadn't dialed up yet that uh, looked good based on what we'd seen, uh, you know, in uh, earlier sequences, and just uh, a couple really excellent calls by Dave and. And uh, excellent execution. Travis, you know, put the ball. I assume you're talking about the two throws, the two touchdown throws, were really the the difference in the overtime games and so or the overtime periods. And so it was a nice little out and up to Kalen Clay in the first overtime period. And then uh, we, uh, based on what leverage we were expecting to see from the secondary, uh, great job by Travis sticking the slant route into Scotty in, uh, for the game winner. Uh, speaking of Kalen Clay, I noticed on the, the storylines that uh, Liz puts together that Kalen's to be honored at senior day, uh, whereas Tevin Carter uh, it says will apply for a medical register, and so he will not be honored. I knew at one point there was talk of getting Kalen an extra year of eligibility. Is that still a possibility? Remote possibility. I think it's uh, really a long shot. And so um, that being said, we're going to go ahead and honor Kalen, and, and uh, we will take uh, every – uh, possible angle we can to try to get an, another year for Kalen, and, and if it is possible, we'll, we'll uh, certainly pursue it. But, but it looks like it's, uh, like I said, a, a, a long shot. Whereas Tevin, we feel just the opposite, where he's, he's uh, just about as sure a thing as you can have uh, in getting that extra year. Never a sure thing till it's done, but we feel really good about it. Having played so many close games and what your third overtime game, how much did that play a factor in how your team performed in that double overtime, especially on the road? I think it helps. I think you get used to uh, circumstances and and uh, being in our third overtime situation of the season, our guys know exactly uh, knew exactly what to expect and and uh, and you work on that during. It's not the first time we have dressed it. You know, in spring ball, you take some time and talk about overtime periods and, and fall camp, but really there is nothing you can do. Uh, in those situations, uh, in in practice, to uh, you know to get any more ready for it than just running your plays. I mean, it's just more football. It's not a any different type of uh, situation other other than the starting point. But uh, yeah, to answer your question, uh, the familiarity of our team and you know having gone through two already this season, I think was a, a help for us in that uh, last one. How is the team doing injury-wise? Did everybody kind of come out of that game healthy? And then also, what's the status of Jason Whittingham moving forward? Uh, it was a, it was a good game as far as uh, coming out. You know, we never talk about injuries in particular or, or specifically, but but it was uh, one of our better games as far as uh, getting uh, banged up. Uh, Jason, there's a chance he'll play this week. Uh, it's uh, it's going to come right down to probably a game time decision. 
but we expect and hope to have them for certain uh, the next two games, you know, our final regular season game and then the bowl game, unless there's a, a setback of some sort. Coach, how much of the conservative offense is because your defense and your special teams are dealing the way they are? We're not trying to be conservative on offense. We're just playing the way we think gives us the best chance to win. And so we're, uh, you know, all we care about is winning. And it's, uh, that's what we're doing. And, and uh, there's no, there's no uh, conscious effort to be conservative or anything like that. We're just trying to, to give us the best percentage and the best chance to win the football game. And, uh, you know, the, and job one in doing that is taking care of the football. And our offense did a great job of that on Saturday of taking care of the football. We're a plus one in the turnover margin. We're, when we're plus in the turnover margin, we're a pretty good team, you know, as far as our win-loss record. I don't know about you, but I'm thrilled to have an afternoon kick this weekend. Yeah, me Looking too. at Arizona, yeah. what's the biggest challenge that they're going to pose for you that you have to deal with this weekend? Well, they're a very balanced team. I think that's the thing you can say about them. They're running the ball well offensively, uh, about 185 yards a game. They're over 300 yards a game uh, throwing the ball. So they're just about – they're approaching 500 yards a week on offense. They're scoring points. Uh, defensively, they're playing well. In addition, they've got a really good linebacker. Um, Scooby Wright, he's uh, one of the best in the in the nation, uh, and so he's a, he's a, a really good player for him. And so I would say the thing they present is a very balanced team, and uh, across the board, there there really is no area that they have a glaring weakness. Have you seen that the the South Division title is still a, a possibility, and do you do you know how it breaks down? Mathematically, I guess we're still in it. I mean, there's a lot of things that have to happen. We're not really concerned with that right now. We know one thing for sure. If we're not able to find a way to win Saturday, nothing nothing matters And so, as far as that goes. And so we haven't really uh, spent much time thinking about that other than we've been told that if this, 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 and this, and this, and this happens, then, then we got a shot. So, But we were in that situation a few years back, and all that stuff happened except for one thing. Your quote know, machine. Do our part. Yeah, quote machine. That's me. That's my middle <laughs> name. Yeah, exactly. It's by design, though. <laughs> Good stuff. Could you expand a little bit on the senior class? Um, I know every year you want to send them off, send them to a bowl game. This year you're not only sending them off to a bowl game, but you're sending them off with a winning season. Can you mm -hmm. just comment on all that? It's great. And that's that's it was one of our primary objectives is, is to send the seniors out the right way. And that's that's every single year you want to do that. And it's been disappointing the last couple of years that our seniors uh, have not been able to have that bowl experience. But uh, this group is going to. And uh, it, it's a, a group that uh, really is, uh, you know, as most senior groups are, the backbone of this football team from a lot of different standpoints, uh, particularly the leadership. And we've had uh, leadership in this, on this football team that's as good as any team we've ever had here. And that's, and that's a big credit to those seniors. I know there's a lot going on this this Saturday, but uh, you know it's a, the Ute Proud game. I was wondering uh, if it's significant to you about uh, the university's relationship with the tribe and and the namesake of the team. Oh, sure it is. It's absolutely significant, and uh, you know it's it's great to be able to honor uh, the Ute tribe and in in some different ways on Saturday. And we're proud to wear the drum and feathers on our helmet, and and uh, it is absolutely a huge deal to us. And uh, there's going to be some things going on at halftime. Obviously, we won't be able to uh, see any of that going on. But, but uh, it's yeah, I'm I'm glad we're doing it. Obviously, and I think it's a, a great way to recognize the U tribe and and what they mean to our university and our football team. With Solomon's mobility, how does that affect your pass rush and your blitz package? Well, it's certainly a concern, and uh, that is a strong suit of his. He's he's very quick, shifty, and so it's a lot like. Uh, when you're playing, uh, you know Oregon. These teams that, that have a quarterback that is that is a uh, really a legitimate running threat, and so and down and distance plays into it as well. You know, there's there's certain down and distances where you're going to turn your pass rush loose regardless of who's a quarterback. But but uh, you've got to be uh, really tuned in to uh, spacing in your rush lanes, lane, in lane integrity in the pass rush and. And uh, that forces you to do that when you're playing a quarterback like Solomon. He's having a nice year. Redshirt freshman is doing a nice job. Uh, Jason Fnike is listed as both the stud linebacker and a MAC linebacker starter, and mm -hmm. Gianni Paul is the, the backup. What's kind of the reasoning behind that, and is Gianni still going to play? Uh, Gianni will play. Uh, he's, been, he's been hobbled this year. He's gone through a lot of stuff physically, but uh, again, we don't ever detail that out. But, 
but uh, that's primarily the reason. Plus, Jason's been playing good football. Jason Fanica has been a really, a real pleasant surprise for us, uh, making that transition in midseason, essentially, from uh, when we got so thin at linebacker to uh, coming from defensive end and playing that spot, and, and has done a nice job for us. Really nice. Yeah. Um, Arizona's obviously played in a, a lot of close games, mm -hmm. like your team this year, and won some of those close games. Just wondering, you know, from your perspective, you know, what does a team kind of gain from winning some of those close games, and does it sort of is it kind of contagious as the season goes on? I think it can be a uh, something that uh, becomes. Uh, I don't want to say your signature, but uh, you know, the, the type of team that you are, being able to win those close games, and, and it becomes a mentality. I guess is the best way to put it. And uh, our guys have definitely developed that mentality through the course of the season. We haven't won every close game. We know that. But uh, they, these guys believe that they're going to win every game that we're in. And, and uh, when it comes right down to the wire, there's a lot of belief uh, you know, on our football team that we're going to get it done. And they have most weeks. Arizona is no longer known as a basketball program only or basketball school. Is, can you comment on the job Rich Rodriguez has done and turning that into a Pac-12 contender? Seems Great like job. Rich has done a, a phenomenal job there. Um, this is, what, year three for Rich, I believe, at Arizona. And, and he's always been a great coach. I mean, the, the Michigan situation was unfortunate, but that doesn't diminish who he is or you know, what, he's, what he's capable of as a football coach. He's, he's a, a guy that I've always had a great deal of respect for. And it uh, doesn't surprise me what he's doing there because he is a, a top flight football coach. Going back to the seniors, is there any kind of special, more special bond that you have with them as a result of them being the, the class that was sort of uh, either the first one in the Pac-12 or the one you know, from your last year in the Mountain West that they've sort of made this transition along with you? you could, there's probably something to that. I haven't thought of that specifically, but, but uh, these guys have been through the journey with us and from start to finish and and uh, it's uh, you know there's just so many guys I hate to single any of them out because there's I think there's 15 or 16 of them that that are in that class and have, all have contributed and meant so much you know some more than others as far as playing time there's some guys that that haven't played much at all that are just great squad guys and team team guys and and working on great being great teammates is, is uh, something we try to do a lot of and and uh, there's a bunch of those guys in that class, and and yet have gone through a lot of the things we've gone through together. It's been it's very rewarding to see them go out on a positive and a high note. Obviously, with success for your team, a lot of uh, your assistant coaches may be looked at as potential head coaches or, or other positions elsewhere in the in the nation. How does that balance work with you with trying to keep them, but also trying to allow them to succeed? Well, you always want your coaches to advance, and you want them to, uh, you know, that's. Uh, I wouldn't say every assistant coach, but most assistant coaches in the profession aspire to be head coaches, and and uh, position coaches aspire to be coordinators. And, you know, you go up through the ranks, and so my take on that is, anytime we can help somebody uh, get in a situation that furthers their career, I'm all for it. We don't really talk about it or address it till after the season, but uh, I'm always, uh, you know, anxious for our guys to. Uh, you know, to get in those, get to get those opportunities to uh, advance. I think it's a very good thing for them and for the program.